connection, change, passion. We've heard a lot of that today. It's pretty exciting. I am so excited to be here. Like, it's been a mind-blowing day. I've been like watching everything and I'm just going crazy. There's so much to learn. How are you guys feeling? Are you feeling good about this? It's been amazing. Yeah. Holy cow! Wow! So I'm so psyched, and you know what? I'm gonna be a little bit reflective, but I'm also gonna try to keep the energy up. So my idea, my TED idea I want to spread is about connection. And not just any kind of connection, but connection that is deep, connection that is authentic, genuine, meaningful, life-changing. You know the type I'm talking about. Eight people, eight people shoved in a residence room talking for five hours about anything that comes up. You've been there. Four people in a diner talking about philosophy, removing the mask the society is fashioned for them, and they're taking in the sights. Two people going for coffee, then going for a walk, and next thing you know, they're talking all night long and they go off for breakfast. Someone you haven't seen for 13 years, but you had a very impactful time with them, and you see them, and you're worried, am I gonna hug, am I gonna shake my hand? What happens? Big, huge hug. Why? Because of connection. That's what I wanna talk about today. Oh, sorry. So connection, again, is very, very important, and connection happens across all different forms of touch points. We have Twitter, we have Facebook, we have phone calls, we have text messages, we have in-person. But connection also goes across different ranges of people. Your parents, your colleagues, your coworkers, people in different organizations, people in different associations. But connection is something that we, I think, take too much time to think only on service level. So like, look at, the, the, look at you in the audience. Here you sit beside somebody. Have you talked to the person beside you? And maybe you're with your friend, so that's fine. <laughs> but if you're not, have you talked to them? If so, why not? What's stopping you? You're out there talking to people, but then you're hanging out with your buddies. You're not talking to the other person. Why not? What's stopping you? Even family members or your best friends, your BFFs that you have, right? You know probably their favorite movie was Social Network. You know that their favorite musician is Justin Bieber. God knows why, but you know, right? But do you know about their values? Do you know about their spiritual beliefs? Do you know what they fear the most? Have you driven down into those depths of connection? A bit about my background. So I actually have, I don't know what I want to do with the rest of my life. However, I have found my passion, and right now, man, I'm owning it. But you know what? It was a 30-year journey to get there. It started off around here when I was like two. As you can see, I'm you know, very comfortable in social situations. I was always a bit of a joker. In fact, I was kind of a center of attention kind of guy. Okay? So the people thing was always there. But you know what? The first time I actually thought about what I wanted to do the rest of my life, what my true passion was, was in 1986. I was coming back from grade 10 gym class, going to English class, and I found out about the shuttle disaster. The Challenger exploded in 1986. And I was only in grade 10, but we spent the next two periods talking about it by the end of the day. And you know, I, growing up as a little kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. I mean, who doesn't want to be an astronaut, right? Seriously. But at that point in time, I was like, you know what? I definitely want to be an aerospace design engineer which is what I did. And I thought my passion was math and physics. Then I got on the stage and I performed in musical theater. Oh my God, yeah, the, the reaction of the audience, right? The buzz, the feel, the applause, the post-show discussions. Oh man, you know what? I was like, I definitely want to be a musical theater performer. That's my passion, performance. Now my dad was always like, well, uh, Bobby, you should be a doctor, lawyer, engineer. So he wasn't too happy about this one. It's okay. And then I got into brand marketing. You know, persuading and influencing people to change their consumer behavior. Honestly, it's exactly what this picture is. It's sexy. It was very sexy. But when I look back at my entire life and all the things that I've ever done, the most amazing things, the most passionate things that I was always about was things with people. I love people. And further to that, I love connection. And to me, that's my passion. My passion is people, my passion is connection. In fact, a lot of people describe me as Baloo the bear. I'm basically a big teddy bear. <laughs> which is why I brought up my little brother. 
to show you guys. I've also been known as a, 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 the diary of the people. Because what happens is, my wife is, my wife always gets in my case, she's like, how is it you meet someone for the first time, and then two hours into it, they've told you about their personal problems, their work problems, dealing with their mother, their sex life, like, well, what do you do, how do you do that? I was like, I don't know. I started thinking about it, and I was like, okay, you know what, maybe there is something there. I, I mean, I've always been a natural connector, and I'm the type of guy that, I don't have a best friend, I have a hundred best friends. I have a hundred people out there that I would go to bat for, and I know them inside out, and I would talk about anything to, and they would do the exact same thing for me. So how did I do that? Well, that's what I want to talk about. What I did, really, was I cared genuinely, and I connect, and I communicated very deeply, passionately, and proactively. So let's talk about caring. We care about a lot of things out there. We care about, or we think we do. We care about our families, we care about our, our careers, we care about our friends, our colleagues, we care about our spiritual beliefs, our values, our associations. But what do we genuinely care about? How much do we care about it? And how does that caring affect our relationship with other people? Now I saw this image growing up. You know, when I was a little kid, I saw this image growing up about starving African children, right? And I gotta say, um, I'm ashamed to admit this. I, I thought I cared about it, but I genuinely did not care. And I don't know why I didn't. I, I feel ashamed about that because I should care about this, this, this stuff. I do now, but back when I was younger, I didn't care enough. I didn't care enough to do what needed to be done. Because you see it on TV all the time, every day for like 20 years. Same with homelessness. Now I saw child hunger when I actually went to Pakistan, and I also see it sometimes in other urban cities. Same thing with homelessness, I see homelessness everywhere. People walk by and they wrongfully think, you know what, that person should get a job. Or they wrongfully think, you know what, someone should really take care of this. Not me, someone else. What is stopping us from caring about this stuff? Caring is some, it's an act, you have to genuinely want to care. The first time I really understood child issues, honestly, was when I had my little baby boy, Niall. And I looked at him, and I'm staring at him, and I realized that fundamentally he is going to be there for the rest of my life. And I'm always going to have to be there to take care of him. It blew my mind. And you know, two days later I saw an insurance commercial with this guy in a hospital, and he's like holding his baby, and he's like, it's not about me anymore. And I started bawling for two minutes. <laughs> oh my God. And because I connected. And now when I see this, it hurts me to see this. And I want to do something. So when you care, when you generally care about a person, a group, an organization, a cause, an idea, you tend to modify your behavior. Now how can we care more? We can be passionate. We talk about passion today. We can be passionate. Passion is infectious. We care if you care. Be passionate with your heart and soul. Awareness. Awareness of our involvement in the global world that we live in and how we affect other people. Awareness of issues like things that are going on in Japan right now, or in Haiti, or in Pakistan. Relating to people because we're all, we all share common relatability. And we can care generally a lot better. But caring is not enough. We also have to communicate. I could care a lot about you or an organization, but if I don't say it, How's anyone going to know that I care about it? So communication is also very, very key. So let's talk about communication. And communication, there's the obvious stuff about communication, but then there's the stuff that's not obvious. Obvious, yeah, we have to talk to people. Okay, great. What are we talking about? What exactly are we saying? Say more than what you want to say. Tell them the what, and then tell them the so what. When someone says, hey, I love that TED talk. Yeah, why? I really love your personality. Oh yeah? Why? Say more. Say more than what you normally would say. Get below the surface. Listening. Listening is not just active listening, it's also about listening for follow-ups. You hear what they have to say. Think about the content as well as the context of what they're saying. Follow up. Dive deeper. Expand on something they're talking about. Physicality. Physical. Physical communication happens. We communicate physically with, with a look. My mom, when she's mad at me and she wants me to stop doing something, she goes like this. 
I know exactly what she means. Okay? I, I spoke with Drew Dudley earlier today. He was freaking amazing. And you know what? I shook his hand. He shook my hand and did the hand for sort of thing. Oh, I like that. Right? It goes beyond. And then, of course, there's hugs. I love hugs. Okay? You hug somebody, sometimes you hug just a little bit longer. You know? A couple extra seconds. Or yeah, you do that little extra, little squeeze, huh? Or the, the rub the back, oh hey, you know? I love that, I love hugs. I mean, look at the physicality here. My arm around him provides trust and comfort. The look on his face is, oh my God, I love my daddy. Look at my face is, I am the luckiest guy on the planet. The look on the people in this picture, everyone's like, you know what? We're all super happy and super cozy and we wish we could stay like this for 10 hours. <laughs> Also with communication, you've got to be open. Don't put up a wall. Be completely open with who you are and what you want to say. Be honest. Be refreshingly honest. Be brutally honest. Ask questions. The whole idea about asking questions is to dive deeper into the scenario or the situation. Don't make assumptions about people. Because you know what? My personal philosophy is always assume the best in people. Because you know what? They'll surprise you. <laughs> and risk taking is key. If you want to make a really deep connection, you've got to take risks. You've got to be the one to say it first. I love you. Say that first. Call your mom first. Be the first one to do something. Be the first one to walk up to that speaker you want to talk to during the break and go talk to him. It's okay to talk about dark subjects too. You can talk about death, war, fear. Why? Because you know what? Every single person on this planet has thought about it and we think about it. So it's okay to get into that discussion. So take those risks and get in there and get into those courageous conversations. And what I end up with is caring plus communication equals connection. And that's my main idea I want to share with you. If you genuinely care about it, enough about a person, a group, an organization, cause or idea, and you communicate deeply and passionately to that person, group, or organization, or about that cause or idea, then you can achieve a powerful connection. So the rules of connection. I, I started, you know, I started talking to people about it, about uh, you know, giving people advice and stuff. And next thing you know, people are giving me uh, some scenarios to deal with. And I started spewing off rules of connection. So then I was like, you know, maybe I should create a list. So I started tweeting one every day. And then next you know, you know, I came with some simple stuff like listen, smile, eye contact, right? Then it got more complex. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm trying to fit the 140 characters in here. It's getting a little bit tough. And then what happened with my rules of connection? They started to become things that I was dealing with on a daily basis, which was kind of cool. There was a story behind every single rule of connection, which I thought was kind of cool. And I came up with one last night. Connection between a speaker and an audience member is a two-way street. I went to TEDx Waterloo last week, and, and you know what happened? I was there, and as an audience member, I was connecting with the speakers. Because some speakers spoke to me really well and we connected, but other ones maybe didn't. I connected with them. Hopefully you're doing that too. <laughs> Some closing thoughts. Connection is awesome. You need to be brave about it and dive into it because connection can make a difference. Connection motivates for change. Connection inspires people to explore themselves and have personal growth. And as I said, caring plus communication equals connection. But you know what? If you create enough solid, genuine, deep, authentic connection, the more connections you create, then you create a community. A community that's diverse, a community that's without prejudice, open, embracing, and hopefully not cliquey. I'm not a big fan of cliques. Okay? You know who you are, don't be cliquey. <laughs> and if you create a strong enough community that's all connected across their different ideas, values, passions, causes, and experiences, then you create change. And change is a powerful thing. So what I would tell you is communicate with passion. Communicate with authenticity and genuineness. Communicate with risk taking and connect with people on a very, very profound level because you will then create a community and you will inspire change. So moving forward, I ask you, all of you, even the person beside you, beside you in the seats, go there and talk to them after the break and say, you know what, listen, here's what I want to say about you, but say more. Even if they're your best friend and you love them very much, you know what, there's probably more you could say about how much you love them, or what you specifically love about them. Use the power of connection to create positive change for yourselves, for each other, and for the world. Thank you very much.